Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm one of the admins for the Crossbreed Poultry in Motion Group. And you're watching this video because you want to learn how to tube feed your chicken. So I'm going to cover this tube feeding syllabus. This is available in a Word document. I can send it to you after uh, we meet via FaceTime. But I'm going to cover a few things that um, I don't need to cover in person. You can watch these on your own. And then if you have any questions, please ask when we do meet up to do a FaceTime call. So the first thing you want to do is you've got your tube and your syringe. And there's two different styles of syringes. There's the black plunger, there's an O-ring syringe. Either of them will, will work just fine. I recommend lubing your syringe to begin with. Um, every single time you wash your syringe and before you put food in it, you wanna make sure that that black plunger is lubed really well. So you can put a little bit on the inside of this um, syringe itself, a little bit around the black O-ring or the plunger, and then push this in and out a couple of times. So make sure that you have no resistance when you go to depress that syringe. I prefer to use mineral oil, but you can use any oil that you want. Um, mineral oil doesn't break down over time. Um, it also can be used as a laxative in your chicken if you ever had a stagnant crop. Um, little trick, you can use a baby food jar, fill it up with a little bit of mineral oil, then you pull that syringe, black plunger out, and you just dip it, then you don't have to get your fingers all dirty every time. That was a trick from Jill. Okay, so lube your syringe, lube, lube, lube. Every single time, lube your syringe. You want as little resistance as possible when you are pushing down the food through your syringe, through the tube into your chicken. Step two is gonna be to do a dry run of your tube into your chicken. Using a dry tube, no food, no water. To date, nobody has killed their chicken using a dry tube you get a chance to check out the anatomy of your chicken as well as to manage the fight. And this is a step we're gonna do together. Don't try it at home by yourself. Um, we'll set up a FaceTime. However, I want you to do this dry run when your tube is clean and dry and there's no food in it. So after we do the dry run, then the next thing you'll do is do a dry run of your food into the container. So regardless of which syringe you have, you're going to draw up the food into your syringe, rinse the tip off, connect your tube back on there, and then push all of the food from your syringe back into your container. What you're gonna, that, that is going to accomplish, what that's going to accomplish is testing how much pressure it takes to push the food through the syringe, as well as making sure that you don't have any lumps or clogs along the way. If at any given point it feels like it's too hard and you can't push the food easily through the tube, disconnect your tube, push the food back into the container, mix a little water in there and start all over again. If you get a clog, same thing. But by testing your food into the container first, you'll see the flow rate that comes out of the tube back into the container. Okay, I just washed my syringe and my tube. I'm just going to oil it up just a little bit. I'm gonna plunge this in and out a couple of times, just like that draw up my food. Now you'll notice that if you are sucking up the food and you get a whole bunch of air bubbles, it's probably because your food is too thick. Also, when you mix up your food and you let it sit for about 15 minutes, it will definitely thicken. So I always recommend mixing up your food, letting it sit, checking it, and then drawing it up into your syringe. If you draw it up ahead of time and let it sit and you come back later, it's gonna be like concrete. You won't be able to push it through your, your tube anymore. This tip is gonna be dirty before, uh, so you wanna rinse the tip off before you connect your syringe on there. Before you connect your tube on there. Now, the dry run of your food back into the container. I like this container because it's wider at the top than the bottom and I can make two days worth of food at a time. Depress from the connection point of the tube and the syringe. That way you don't blow the tube off if there is any lumps or bumps or any clogs. So I'm using pretty moderate pressure and it's flowing out pretty evenly. I don't feel like I have any clogs or any problems with this. However, I just made this food so that I know, I know that if I don't feed this to her right away, it's gonna thicken and I won't be able to push it through there later. But, and that's about the rate at which I would feed my chicken. If I was, um, if I was pushing this into my chicken, that's about as slow as I would go. 
Okay, so I feel like I have a pretty good consistency. Might have to add a tiny bit more water a little bit later, but you'll notice that after you stopped pushing, the food still continues to come out of the tube. So this is a really good point to make. When you are done feeding your chicken, make sure that you wait just a second, then you can pull the tube back out of the chicken so that uh, you don't have any drips coming up along the way. Um, and then don't disconnect your tube from your syringe. There's a vacuum on here, so once you stop pushing, it's not coming out of the tube anymore. But if you were to disconnect the tube, now all of a sudden that food could free flow out of the, the food could free flow out of the tube um, and be coming out as you pull it out of your chicken. So make sure and keep this connected. So I tuck this under my arm, put this in my chicken, take the tube out, pull it out, all done. After we complete a FaceTime call where you get a chance to test run the dry run of your tube into your chicken and you learn how to manage the fight as well as wrapping, you'll try the dry run a couple more times on your own. Once you've done the dry run a few times and you're finding that you're pulling the tube out and the placement is the same every single time, you know how far down that tube is supposed to go into your chicken. Then you're gonna make a mark with a Sharpie um, or a piece of tape on your tube. What that's going to do Marking your tube during a dry run is going to tell you where the bottom of the crop is. It's going to give you an external landmark to how far off the bottom of the crop you are. So a dry run, you find the bottom of the crop, mark it where their beak is at, pull it out. That's your landmark mark right there. Now, when you go to feed, let's say you had, you had your black mark on your tube. When you go to feed, you're going to find the bottom of the crop. You're gonna look for your black mark at the edge of their beak and then you're gonna back it off just a little bit so that you want that tube suspended within the crop but not pushing on the bottom of the crop. That black mark is now an external landmark to where the bottom of the crop is. So if you look down as you're feeding your chicken and the black mark is this far off the edge of their beak, you know you're perfect. If you look down and that black mark is this far off the edge of your beak, whoa, 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 you're in the no-go zone. You gotta stop, reposition, Get, a, get control of their head, make sure you know where everything is at. When you are tube feeding your chicken, you want the distance between where the food is coming out and the edge of the trachea as far away as possible within safety. So again, not pushing on the bottom of the crop, but suspended within that crop. When you are giving food to your chicken, you'll wanna connect the tube to the syringe and then depressed against a hard surface. That hard surface can be against a countertop, it could be against your chest, it could be against your knee, or it could be another person pushing the syringe. I encourage you to learn how to do it on your own so that if you're ever home alone or there's nobody to help you, that you are able to do it on your own. I like to push down against a countertop. When you're pushing, you wanna push where the connection point is of the tube to the syringe. Holding onto the tube, but pushing against the syringe, this now makes sure that all the food is gonna go through the tube. If the food is on the thicker side and you are pushing like a shot, you can blow apart the connection between the tube and the syringe. And if that happens, you'll likely be getting food all over yourself, all over your house, and all over your bird. And if you do that, you'll only do it one time, I promise. Send me a note if you do. If you're learning to tube feed your chicken, it's more than likely because your chicken has a compromised airway. Whether it's a missing beak, a collapsed tongue, or some other reason, that your chicken shouldn't be drinking water on its own, the water that's in your tube feed formula should be enough for the entire day. And you'll know based on the poops. If your chicken's poop is really, really, really thick and clay-like, you might need to add a little bit more water. But more than likely, if your chicken is having really hard poops, you wouldn't be able to push that tube feed formula through the tube and the syringe. So check the poops, monitor the crop, see how fast it's emptying. And if at any point you need to add a little bit more water, you can supplement just plain water into your chicken as well. But tube feed formula generally has the right consistency to provide enough hydration for a whole day. Aside from protecting the airway of your chicken, tube feeding is meant to be a time-saving measure. And so it's much faster to tube feed a chicken than it is to make and roll torpedoes and it's much cleaner than syringe feeding or feeding mash. I like to make two days worth of food at a time. At the end of two days when I run out of food, I wash everything, the tube, the syringe, my container, and I start fresh. And again, when I load my syringe, lube, 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 
first thing you do before you drop any food. In the days that I have an active batch of food going, in between, these are my dirty tubes and my dirty syringe. Um, one, I only need one tube, but I do have two syringes. So I wrap the tip of the tube in a paper towel and I put the whole thing in a Ziploc bag. I store this in the refrigerator until it's time to wash and start all over again. By doing this, I also have a preloaded tube so that I'm not pumping air down into my chicken with each feeding. If you are making your food two days at a time, you're gonna be pulling food out of the refrigerator that's gonna be refrigerator temperature. And that might not be the best temperature to feed your chicken, especially if they're really small. So I recommend drying up the food, putting your tube and your syringe back into your Ziploc container and plunge it in a bowl of warm water for about 10 minutes to take the chill off and at least bring it up to room temperature. If you're making your food fresh every time, it's less of an issue because room temperature food is the perfect temperature to feed your chicken. The smaller the chicken, the more they will need that food to be warmed up and closer to their own body temperature so that it's not chilling them as they're being fed. How much should you feed your chicken? Well, that's dependent on how big your chicken is and what they were eating previously. If you have a chicken that is emaciated or a chicken that has been starving or not getting enough, you're better off to feed small amounts more often. By feeding a small amount more often, your body, the chicken's body is able to absorb those nutrients at a very slow rate. A chicken who hasn't been getting enough nutrients for quite some time is going to have a hard time transitioning from a state of starvation to a state of processing food again. And so small amounts, possibly even on the more liquidy side, is gonna be much safer. If you feed a chicken too much all at once, it's like watering a plant that hasn't been watered in two weeks. The water will run through the soil, nothing will be absorbed, and the plant will still be starving and dry. A chicken, on the other hand, the water's not going to run through. However, it's likely that the chicken will vomit, which compromises the airway, possibly, and could possibly kill a chicken. So, small amounts more often. The catheters that we are using, these red rubber tubes, are urethral catheters. They're meant to go into very sensitive parts of our bodies. There's no rivets, there's no seams, and as long as you don't modify this tube, it's not going to injure your chicken. So feeding once an hour and only feeding five milliliters would be much safer on a chicken that hasn't eaten for a while than to feed 30 milliliters all at once. After you've gotten your chicken out of a state of emaciation, if that happens to be the case, how much to feed your chicken is dependent again on how big your chicken is and how they were being fed previously. So if you have a chicken that was previously eating torpedoes and you know what a full crop feels like of torpedoes, I would aim for just slightly less than that when you first start with the tube feed formula. It's going to have more water. There is a slight risk of, aspirate, of vomiting when you, if you overfill your chicken. So keeping it on the less full side until you figure out how your chicken is accepting and digesting the food that you've just given. So aiming for three quarters of a full crop and then watching the poops, making sure there's enough liquid, and how long does it take for your chicken to digest the food that you just gave. That's how you're gonna know how much to feed your chicken. Again, less is more. You're better off to start with small amounts more often and work it up three to five milliliters with each feeding to aim for that three quarters of a full crop. With tube feeding, similar to torpedoes, mash, or any other chicken that's outside, chickens are grazers. So it doesn't need to be completely empty by the time you feed again, but you do wanna aim for about 75% empty when you go to feed. That covers the majority of the tube feeding bullets that are in the tube feeding syllabus, which I'm happy to send to you in the Word document. Just mention it when we get together for the call. When we do the FaceTime call, I'm gonna teach you about the anatomy of your chicken, how to manage the fight, how to wrap your chicken, and how to hold so that you can keep your chicken safe and effectively tube fed on a regular basis. If you have any other questions, please feel free to ask during that tube feeding call. To get ready for the call, all you will need is your tube, a chicken, and a wrap, and a phone. Somewhere to stand your phone up is really handy. I happen to have mine on a tripod, but if you have a countertop that you can stand it up on and place it up against a jar or a water bottle, anything like that, but somewhere where I can see your lap, your chicken, and get a good view of what's going on, because I am going to watch you closely and help you all along the way. If you wanna have somebody else in on the call, I'm more than happy to teach two people at a time. I think it's great for two people to hear the same information if you do have a partner that wants to be involved or is learning to do it with you. I look forward to meeting with you soon.